How much does it cost to become a chartered engineer? There are lots of different organizations out there that can give you chartered engineer status. So I've taken a look in this video at some of the options that I explored when I was going through the chartered process. Uh, to give you an idea of how much it can cost for those organizations, if you're looking for the uh, least expensive way to become a chartered engineer. So the least expensive way that I found is to become chartered through the IET. The UK's IET uh, only costs 380 pounds to become chartered, far less than the other options that I've explored here. Uh, I've, I've put uh, amounts here in pounds, euro, New Zealand dollars, and Australian dollars. So uh, I've converted them all to uh, US dollars as a common currency on the side. So the UK's IET is the cheapest way that I found to become a chartered engineer. I come from an electrical, electronic engineering background myself. So uh, the IET was, was more suited to what I was looking for. Uh, now that consists of a fixed chartered application fee, as well as the annual membership fee that's required when you uh, sign up to become chartered with the IET. The IET does require a membership first before coming, becoming chartered. So uh, this is probably the preferred option in my case. However, I did happen to apply for Engineers Australia first, uh, which is, as you can see, the most expensive on this list. So the options that I've explored here are the IET, uh, Engineers Ireland, Engineer, Engineering New Zealand, and Engineers Australia. So you can probably tell from the accent, but I'm Australian myself. And unfortunately, Engineers Australia is the most expensive out of these options for becoming chartered. The IET being one of the cheapest organizations, it was suggested to me when I was going through my chartered process to apply, but I wish I'd thought of that earlier. Uh, the alternatives are uh, Engineering Ireland. Engineering Ireland includes a uh, 400 euro application fee, as well as a requirement to become a member of Engineers Ireland first for about three months before you go through the chartered process. I had a colleague tell me that uh, someone they were mentoring who didn't seem to examine well enough to get into the, despite being a good engineer, didn't examine well enough to become a chartered member with the uh, Institute of Civil Engineers in the UK. So alternatively, they applied for Engineers Island. And Engineers Island had a much uh, friendlier application process for this particular engineer. And they ended up getting chartered with Engineers Island all while working in London still. So uh, Engineers Island can offer an alternative if you're uh, not, not so happy with some of the processes or some of the examination requirements of a particular body. So Engineering Island, Engineers Island being another alternative there. Uh, I also looked at Engineers New Zealand, being Australian myself, New Zealand being close by, uh, Engineering New Zealand doesn't require you to be a member first before you apply. Uh, it, is, it does attract a fee of about 1,500 New Zealand dollars. Uh, that's the equivalent to about 1,000 US dollars, or roughly twice the fee of the IET. You don't have to be a member first. You do have to meet other requirements that if you're looking at getting chartered with one of these organizations, you probably meet the requirements already, certain degree types and, and that sort of information. Uh, though with uh, Engineering New Zealand, there is just that one chartered application fee. Ongoing though, to maintain chartered, you do have to spend your annual membership fee only once you're chartered. And there is a requirement to be uh, re retested, re-examined every, I think it's every six years at maximum, which uh, can present its own problems compared to the others. I, I believe uh, chartered renewal with the others is simply by audit. Whereas for Engineering New Zealand, uh, there is a requirement for a formal process, I think at least every six years. So it might be a bit of a burden to go through that process every six years or so to maintain current, but technically I think you should be current with all the organizations here. Finally, the one that I went through is Engineers Australia, and that consists of about 1,800, oh, what was it? It was a bit less than, uh, I think it, mine was about $2,000, though if you're going through it next year, it consists of about $1,800 in chartered application fees and then $570 odd dollars in membership fees. So that comes to about $1,500 to $1,800 US dollars. It's quite pricey. Uh, but they kind of, it is a very friendly process. They try to really uh, help you through each step of the way. If you have any questions, there's someone there to help you. So you do, you, you can get value for money going through the Engineers Australia process, but it can be a bit, uh, <laughs> you can question it a bit at times as to whether it's been worth it for you. I struggled with one of the steps myself where I didn't quite have the evidence material together to suit 
the Engineers Australia process. And I was able to get on the phone with someone in a couple of hours and go through how I could better evidence some of those competencies that Engineers Australia required. So I, I found that quite helpful, being able to talk to someone so easily and quickly. And I feel that that's how they can justify charging the higher fee, that there are people available to help you as an engineer become chartered. So uh, my name's Chris, by the way. Uh, I started this channel as a way to share the lessons learned and some of the tools that I've developed to become a better engineer, a better consultant, and a better professional in the workplace. So if you're interested in, in that sort of thing, becoming a better engineer or, or becoming a better professional or working in better ways, uh, feel free to hit subscribe, follow along, and I'll share some of those lessons learned and tools over the weeks to come. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video.